Hi, I'm Jonathan Broughton from PolesandBlinds.com. Today I'm going to be fitting a 1.8 28mm chrome curtain pole across this window here. This particular curtain pole, it's the Metalworks range from Integra. It comes with all fixtures and fittings included, rings, brackets, screws and full instructions. In this instance, I'm going to be fitting an eyelet curtain pole so the curtain rings won't be required. Right, okay, once the pole is unpacked, uh, you will find, like I say, the brackets, the rings, uh, obviously we have the pole and the finials. Each pole is uh, sold with the uh, correct amount of brackets and rings required, and also, in this particular instance, the Integra Zorb 28mm pole has full fitting instructions, quantities of rings and components supplied are all listed out on the table here. So it's pretty simple, follow these particular instructions. Um, they may vary slightly from the way I'm going to fit the pole today, but obviously this is a general guide to how to fit a, a curtain pole. Okay, here are the eyelet curtains that we're going to be hanging on the curtain pole today. Uh, I know that the finished curtain length, that is the measurement from the very top of the curtain to the bottom of the curtain, is 85 inches. And 85 inches in centimetres it is. 216 centimetres. Right, now what I need to do is deduct from the top of the curtain down to the top of the curtain pole so I know at what level to fit the bracket and the pole to the wall. Right, now one of the critical um, things to do with obviously fitting a curtain pole is to get the pole the right width uh, for the window. In this particular instance we have a 1.8 metre pole which we will we need to cut down. Now what I need to do on this particular window is fit the brackets around about 15 centimetres to the side of the window, to the side of the window recess. Obviously I'm measuring at the bottom because it saves having to reach up to the top, so it's 15 centimetres. What I'm going to do is double that 15 to 30 to take into account this side, measure across to here, and you can see it's 150. So 150 will take your bracket to here and again the same on the left hand side. Okay, right now the critical part, the uh, getting the bracket at the right height for the length of the curtains. As uh, we were looking at the curtains earlier, the eyelet curtains, from bottom of curtain to the top inside of eyelet is 83 inches. Now we obviously want to add a little bit onto that um, to have the gap on the floor, so I'm going to make it 83 and one quarter, or 211.5 uh, centimetres. So, once we've established the height and the distance out, no, cut that point. Okay, and again on the right hand side, measure out 15 centimetres, make a little mark with a pencil, and again, get your tape all the way down to the floor. Keeping it in line with your 15 centimetres out, and again, 211.5, which is again top of curtain pole. So there's our little mark there. Now, what we need to do in this case is ensure that the two marks that we've made on the wall are level, because you wouldn't want your curtain pole to be put up and it's sort of skew and doesn't line up with the, the coving or the top of the window. So what I'm going to do now is string line across the two points I've made. Okay, what I'm going to use here is a braddle and a string line. If you don't have these, you could always use a nail uh, and uh, a length of string or even a screw. So what I'm going to do is at the mark that I made, 15 centimetres out and 211 up, pop that in the wall there. And again, all the way over to the other side, to the other mark, pop my braddle in. Rest that over the top, straighten this up. Then what I'm going to do is stand back and visually look at the string line in comparison to the top of the recess and the coving to see whether it's all lining up. Uh, obviously this is then going to replicate the top of the curtain pole. As you can see, I've strung lined uh, this, this window. Everything's looking fine from a distance. It's level between the coving and the top of the window recess. If it is a little bit skewy, what you can do is 
either simply lower or raise one end so you're quite happy with the way the uh, string is looking which is obviously representing the top of the curtain pole. So in this instance, all is good and uh, it's time to mount the Same again on the left hand side, off the bracket up to the hole that was left from the string lining. In this case, I'm visually lining it up. Make sure the bracket is vertical and again, get the pencil and just mark out the holes of the bracket. So in a moment, what we're gonna do is drill these particular holes you may want to see the instructions for the exact point you want to drill the hole. So, um, and again, use a 6mm drill bit and the 6mm raw plugs included within right, it. Now it's time to drill the hole. Uh, you can either put dust sheets down or use a small box to collect the dust in underneath the drilling point. So, let's just get this drilled. Okay, now it's uh, time to put this particular bracket up. In this case, the screw goes on first. Not all the way in, because we have uh, a keyhole drop-on design on the back of this. So, pop it on. Do that a little bit tighter. And drop it down. So it catches in the top of the keyhole. Insert the bottom screw, which then prevents the whole bracket from moving up and down. There's the brackets. We've got one on this side and one on the right. Uh, now it's time to cut the curtain pole down to size, um, which I'll explain in two minutes. Okay, now we have the two brackets up. We want to establish how far past the curtain pole extends past the bracket. Um, generally, couple of inches or five centimeters. So what you want to do is measure from the outside of the bracket to the outside of the bracket. Uh, that's 151 centimeters. So in this case, I want my curtain pole to extend five past either bracket. So I'm going to add on 10, so that's 161. So my curtain pole now needs to be cut down to 161 centimeters. Before cutting down, obviously you're going to have the finial still attached to the curtain pole which was supplied in the packet. So in this case, small Allen key, Allen key grub screw on the end, a few twists and off the finial pops. Obviously what you need to do now is measure the length of the curtain pole which is 161 centimeters in this case, cut it down with a hacksaw and then reapply the finial to the end and then make sure that the finial is done up securely because you don't want that popping off when the curtains are open and closed. Okay, I've uh, cut the pole down with my hacksaw to the correct length. Uh, I've got the eyelets here. What I'm going to do is pop the eyelets on the curtain pole. I haven't attached the finial to the other end because uh, you don't want that to scratch around on the floor, especially if you don't have carpets down. So, just threading these on. I've got the curtains on the curtain pole. Uh, now I'm going to offer the curtain pole up to the brackets. Just locate those on the brackets and behind the curtain is the little grub screw which needs to be tightened to prevent the pole from sliding left and right. And also the finial will need to go on the end and be secured with the little grub screw and the allen key provided. As you can see here's the finished article. The pole is up, the eyelet curtains are on the pole, the brackets are fixed in place to prevent the pole from moving. So just a quick few pointers again, double check the length of the curtains, ensure you have the right size pole for your window uh, before you start fitting the brackets. Um, also, measure twice, cut once on the, on the curtain pole, otherwise it means getting a new curtain pole. So it's very easy to fit a curtain pole, um, as I've demonstrated. For further information, go to www.polesandblinds.com where you'll find measuring and fitting instructions for these particular cousin poles. Thank you.